Hello and welcome to this session on Parkinson's therapy, particularly levodopa and carpidopa. This is going to be the first in our series on Parkinson's therapy. There will be another video which will include the rest of the uh, drugs in Parkinson's therapy, but let's start with this. So before I explain to you why levodopa and carpidopa is used, let's just look at the basal ganglia pathways for a bit. So the basal ganglia pathways are divided into direct pathway and indirect pathway, right? The direct pathway controls your voluntary movements. The indirect pathway decreases your involuntary movements. So direct pathway increases the voluntary movements and indirect pathway decreases the involuntary movements. You can just remember indirect, involuntary. An example of this is, for example, a movement is required. I want to move my right hand. Let's say I want to move my right hand. So I want to not just only move my right hand, but make sure that none of the other parts of my body move let's say without an intent without a purpose so your cortex releases glutamate the specific part of your cortex releases glutamate it stimulates both the direct and the indirect pathway the direct pathway stimulates the wanted movement which is the movement of the right hand and the indirect pathway inhibits the unwanted movement which is let's say the movement of the left hand we don't want this hand to move right so essentially there's a balance between the direct pathway and the indirect pathway in your body and that is affected by multiple things. And one of those things is dopamine. And that dopamine is decreased in Parkinson's. So dopamine not only stimulates the direct pathway, but it also inhibits the indirect pathway. Another thing that you need to take care of is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine increases the indirect pathway. Just remember this for now. Acetylcholine increases the indirect pathway. Why is acetylcholine important? Let's look at it. So levodopa what levodopa does is it's used in parkinson's because in parkinson's dopamine is decreased there's demyelination of the neurons in the substantia nigra and therefore you have decreased dopamine levodopa serves to increase the dopamine in the cns it increases the dopamine which is decreased in parkinson's so the question that arises is why not just use dopamine directly why is it given with carpidopa if you know the questions you can pause the video you can try to answer these Okay, so this is the blood-brain barrier, right? So dopamine does not cross the blood-brain barrier. You need to remember this. Dopamine does not cross the blood-brain barrier, and that is exactly why we give levodopa. Levodopa can cross the blood-brain barrier, and after crossing the blood-brain barrier, it is converted into dopamine by an enzyme known as AAAD, or aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, also known as dopamine decarboxylase, right? So it's converted by dopamine decarboxylase uh, into dopamine but not only centrally it's also converted peripherally this is important if it's converted peripherally dopamine can affect different receptors it can have all of those peripheral side effects so you don't want it to convert into dopamine peripherally therefore you give carbidopa carbidopa inhibits the peripheral conversion of levodopa into dopamine and therefore inhibiting its peripheral side effects and most of that dopamine, it increases the dopamine availability into the CNS. Let's look at the adverse effects. Which adverse effects to start with? The peripheral effects that we talked about. Due to the peripheral conversion of levodopa into dopamine, you get these peripheral effects. Starting with GI distress, nausea. That is exactly why in people who take in chemotherapeutic drugs, you give it, you give on Dancitron for the nausea because dopamine can stimulate the D2 receptors and thus cause nausea. So peripheral effects include GI distress, arrhythmias, orthostatic hypotension because it can cause vasodilation. Now let's look at the central effects which include anxiety, insomnia, confusion, agitation and these are all due to the excess dopamine in the CNS. Then you have something known as response fluctuation. What is response fluctuation? Response fluctuations means you have periods of times where the drug acts really well. You have decreased postural instability. You have decreased rigidity. You have uh, decreased incidence of all of these movement disorders that occur in Parkinson's. And then you have episodes. Then you have periods where the drug, you, it seems like the drug is not working. This is known as response fluctuation. What is narrowing window of therapy? With chronic levodopa use, you, you understand that the window or the therapeutic or the therapeutic effect of levodopa keeps on decreasing and both of these effects are seen in chronic levodopa use 
Thank you so much for joining in. If you want to know about the best of the uh, drugs used in Parkinson's, you can watch my other video. I'll add a link there. Thank you.